all these people with degrees, we feel desperate. We want to feel fulfilled. We want to feel like we're needed. I'm concerned about the future in terms of that gig economy and the lack of benefits. I feel I've, that's a huge problem. Every job should allow people to build a life instead of scrambling from one form of employment to another. We owe that to the coming generations. This is a story about a promise. The one that says if you work hard, get a post-secondary education, you'll end up with a good and stable job. We've all heard it. In fact, I find myself repeating it to my own kids. The question is, is that promise broken? That's what we're gonna to try to find out. <laughs> yeah. Go on. That's 21-year-old Christian McCrave. Now, he wishes he didn't have time to walk the dog these days. After all, he feels like he did his part. Good grades in high school, four years of university, and a degree in mechanical engineering he chose in part because he thought it would land him a job. I actually thought that coming out of school that I would be a commodity, that somebody would want me, and that somebody would want to mold somebody and, and teach them skills and, and turn them into a professional engineer. But instead, I got hit with a wall of not being wanted whatsoever in the industry. Since graduating nine months ago, Christian says he's applied for 250 engineering jobs. He's had four interviews, zero offers. Now he's just trying to get anything at all, even retail. I applied to Beer Town, which is just uh, around the corner here. Sport Check, Staples, Sobeys, Home Hardware, uh, Bulk Barn, Farm Boy, tons of places. The mechanical engineer, you applied to Sobeys? Yeah, to work as a um, deli slicer. And how come? Because it's available, it's a job something at least uh, to keep me a little bit preoccupied, I guess, something to feel accomplished from, you know, as much as an engineer can be accomplished by cutting deli meats. Christian's overqualified for Sobeys. And on the other hand, it's hard to land an engineering job when your most recent experience is sales associate at Winners. Where did you think you'd be at this point in your life? Hopefully working for a robotics company or uh, an engineering company starting my life as an adult, but instead I'm unemployed and living with my parents. What's it like to say that? <laughs> Depressing. Not being employed while having a degree, it's kind of a kick in the face. If anything, it's a setback. You get all this debt and this degree and everyone, everyone does it, but it doesn't necessarily get you further in life sometimes. Still, Christian keeps looking for work. And now if he gets one of the retail jobs, he'll achieve one of the hallmarks of his generation, underemployment. A whopping 27% of Canadian youth have that distinction, and among engineers in Ontario, is 33%. That's the reality, and yet Christian says what he often hears is that it's his own fault. So millennials, the idea is that we're lazy and we don't work hard and stuff is given to us. You know, the idea of the participation award was invented. We didn't want the participation award. We didn't want to be told that we're not good enough, but here's an award anyways. We want to compete, we want to, we want to succeed. Now, if we fast forward a few years in the life cycle of today's job market, we come to Claire Parker. At 26, Claire's already been working for a few years. She has a political science degree and a college diploma in public relations. I live in an apartment, I have three roommates, and I don't have benefits. And if I were the exception, I would feel upset about that because I would feel like that's something that I had done wrong. But I'm not the exception, I'm the norm. Claire's reality is that her main job isn't enough to make ends meet, so she also works at a yoga studio and house sits. I joke with my friends all the time about the millennial side hustle. like. We all have different side hustles that we do to get money on the side in different areas. Um, and that gig life that people are living now. So many people who would have worked in-house for a company before are freelancing now. 
Side hustles, no security. These aren't really part of the promise that's drilled into young people. The promise that a university degree is a ticket to a stable job and a good life. If you get a toothache now, and you're 24 years old, you freak out. You lose, because that's gonna be like a couple grand. You go into the dentist for the first time, you have to do the initial, this. like it's really expensive and that stuff racks up really, really quickly. Um, I think that you're gonna see a lot of people who feel disenfranchised by the workforce and uncared for by the workforce. Claire's hopeful that things will get better, especially since she landed a one-year contract at Halo Brewery in Toronto. Claire tells me she's excited her bosses have even discussed giving her benefits. Five years of education, mm -hmm. did all that. How do you feel about your future now? Good. I feel good now. Um, I think everybody, everybody, no matter where you're at in your life, wakes up sometimes and they're just like, oh, I'm a failure and this sucks, right? Everybody feels that. Um, but overwhelmingly, I'm working for a company that I feel very strongly about, that I have a good relationship with. So we have everything on tap, available in bottles. Okay, cool. I'll get one of everything, please. One of everything? Fifty-two fifty. Just grab a name for your tab. David? From the outside, people would say you're a bartender. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. what you do. Yeah. You're a server. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. But you don't see it that way. You know... <sighs> A little bit, a little bit, but I think anybody who has worked, I definitely, I mean, on paper, I'm a bartender, but I think that anybody who has worked with a small business before, a very small business, understands that it's kind of an all hands on deck situation. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Do you have a lot of opportunities to learn a lot of different things? I am a bartender. I wouldn't consider that to be a bad thing, though. Yeah, palettes change. Yeah. Do you consider yourself underemployed? No, no, I'm not underemployed. And I, I kind of get offended when people say that I am underemployed because it implies that they know more about my situation than I know about my situation. It implies that just the title means more than what's actually going on in the workplace. And it's, it's a huge assumption. Hey. Claire probably could have got her job without yeah. five years of post-secondary education. But she says it's her education that'll allow her to grow with the brewery. Claire's banking on potential, her own and the company's. This is what passes for job security in Claire's life. If you head to any Canadian university, it's easy to see that the promise of higher education is pretty good business. There are more university students than ever before. Higher education is the new normal. So, how many of you have heard of the nature-nurture debate? Kimberly Ellis okay. Hale has been teaching at Laurier University in Waterloo, Ontario for 20 years. No? Okay. Her first year sociology class is on the front lines of the promise. With a good education, you'll have a good future. With a good education, you'll have a good job. And how accurate do you think that, that unwritten promise is? I think for past generations, it may have been. Um, I think for future generations, it's not a guarantee. It absolutely isn't a guarantee. The way that employment is changing, it is moving towards greater precarity so that you can be swapped in and out. And I think that the people that we have in universities right now, the young people, many of them don't see that as their lives. That might be somebody else, but that won't be me. I'm going to get that job. Not everybody's going to get that, and increasingly it will be fewer and fewer who do. Kimberly knows what she's talking about because she lives it. She doesn't have the good, secure job, even though she's been teaching university courses at Laurier since 1998. I'm contract faculty, so that means that I apply every four months, thereabouts, for my job. So. I want you to think about your... I have very little job security. Um, I am one of those contract workers that our, our new approach to employment is going to be turning out. Being precariously employed takes its toll. When you don't have benefits and, and your children need prescriptions, 
you pay the full cost. And I have stood in the pharmacy trying to decide which of my children needed the antibiotic the most because I couldn't afford to purchase both of them. And how do you live with that? I teach in a university. I teach in a place that sells education as the path to a better, more secure life. And I don't have a part of that life. And contract faculty don't. And yet that's exactly the kind of employment that's growing in Canada. Most of the jobs that have been created in recent years are part-time. If this trend continues, what do you think it means for the rest of Canada? And I think we're going to have a we're going to have groups of young people who are going to be very disappointed in what the future holds, given their investment in preparing for it. If after four years of studying and all that money, you end up with a job you could have got out of high school, well, something's broken. So what to do? Well, at the University of Regina, they're trying to do something that kind of sounds crazy. The impact of some of those skills that we have, we want to be able to articulate those experiences as well. They made the promise into a guarantee. If a student doesn't get a full-time job in their field within six months of graduation, they can come back for a free year. Meet 21-year-old Jenna DeBoth. Um, my name is Jenna. I am a fourth-year education student, so I'm in my last semester. How are you feeling about graduating? I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to actually get out there and have a job. <laughs> it's really all I've been thinking about this semester is having a job, so. You always wanted to be a teacher? Since I was in grade two. I was always the person who would stand up in front of my classmates and my friends and pretend, you know, the meter stick pointing at the board and, oh man. But Jenna's dream of becoming a teacher almost fell apart. She's from a small town and when she arrived in Regina, she was overwhelmed. I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified to be on campus because for me, even though Regina is a small city, for me it was huge. And uh, for my first semester, I kind of just hid out. And then my kind of people I lived with were like, you should, you know, get out there and talk to people. It was the University of Regina's guarantee program that helped Jenna break out of her shell. They got her to network, to volunteer, they supported her. The program also taught Jenna the skills you need to get a job. I think before we get started, I, I want to learn a little bit from each of you. Hi, my name is Katrina Nixdorf. I am a first year nursing student. And I'm taking this seminar uh, to get a job more in my field. And not just technical... 120 students have gone through the UR Guarantee program since it started back in 2009. And it seems to work. Only two have come back for a free year. And so no matter what stage you're at, look back and critically reflect on the experiences that we've accumulated through our academic journey. So while a job has always been the unwritten promise of university, it was up to the students to actually hey, find it. Good. What the Regina model does is shift some of the responsibility onto the school. Still, Jenna knows that doesn't make it easy. Are you nervous about getting out there in the world of work? Yes. A hundred percent I'm nervous about it. What if you don't find a job? Well, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> this is something that I'm passionate about. I always want to work with kids. And whether that looks like being a classroom teacher, being an assistant in a classroom, being a librarian, whatever it is, I know I want to work with kids. And I've made sure that I have skills that will help me no matter where I go. And the number one thing that they were looking for was the technical and analytical skills for professions. But the second thing was soft It's no secret that every generation has its challenges getting into the workforce. But right now, there's as much uncertainty as ever. And here's the thing. If today's youth don't make it and their hope runs out, those are high stakes facing the next Canada. <laughs> Nick Purden, CBC News, Toronto.